and the snow. Um, they're very economical, they're a lot less than, than most of the shacks are, um, but your mobility will be limited because you're going to be anchoring yourself down to one spot. So usually you're going to use those more as a base camp, or if you find a good place where the fish are always swimming through, then they work out extremely well, or if you have more than just one or two guys, then they really uh, work pretty well. Now we get to the good stuff. Proper equipment equals more fish. Vexilar, your most important piece of equipment. I cannot tell you that there have been a couple times where I have forgotten to bring my the Vex with me. Um, but the question is, if you are halfway to the lake, what would you do? Has anyone else ever forgotten, forgotten it? What did you do? Go back and get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been halfway to the lake, and I turn around and get back. I've left, I've left lures, I've left uh, baits. I think I even left uh, one of the augers one time, but I kept going back. The one time I forgot the flasher, nope, and I had to go back and get it. Because it's just hard, to, once you have used one, it's just so hard to fish without one because you can see the fish, you can see what the bottom is, you can see how the fish are reacting to your bait. Um, it's really hard to go back to just sitting there staring at a hole uh, once you've been, once you use a flasher. And this is just some different models. You got your, your, vet, your, your 8, your 18, and the new 28. Um, the models here, I've got, uh, this, is a, this is a friend of mine who's, who's in the room right now, this is his 18, he just bought it. Uh, just because he, got, he used one, he used an 18 last year and really liked uh, fishing with a flasher. Um, changed everything. And this is the new 28 that I just got here a couple days ago that I'm looking forward to trying out this weekend for the first time. Rods. Uh, you want to aim to purchase rods or have rods of whatever species you're going after. If you had a chance to kind of go through the rods I've got out here, there's different, uh, you know, there's different strengths, there's different types of blanks, what they're made of. It's fiberglass or carbon. Uh, it just depends on what I'm going for at a particular time in terms of whatever rod I'm going to use. Uh, ultralights, which is what I use a lot of, just because I go for panfish and trout a lot, rainbow trout a lot. Um, I look for ones that are, that are fiberglass or and then do about, about 164th ounce to a 116th ounce jig. I do a lot of jigging with those, light, with those lighter action rods. Uh, lights and medium lights, you're looking at about 16th ounce to an 8th ounce jigs or spoons, perhaps in those if the tip isn't uh, too, too, too loose. Because our spoons like to have a little bit more of a, of a of a stiffer tip just to be able to control the, the cadence a little better. Uh, your medium heavies and your, your heavies, your mediums and your medium heavies, quarter rounds or higher spoons, that's be more your pike style, lake trout, walleyes. Um, I've, but I've seen people who use, all use, who use ultralights for walleyes and I think that's kind of, I think that's crazy uh, to use those. Most people like the, I like the fight uh, that the that ultralight gives and even a smaller fish will give you a good run if well on a nice ultralight rod. Uh, I recommend the Clarence Extensive lineup for, for in-store models. There are, if you go to the Rooster, uh, Shields, Cabellus, what have you, you're going to see a lot of rods. Uh, Clarence has a lot of different models. Um, I like the uh, Triple Series myself. Um, I've got one in the tank over there right now. It's a really, really nice rod for, for an in-store model. Um, or the Jason Mitchell rods. Um, I just got my first meat stick this year. Uh, show of hands, who here has a meat stick? Sticks are really are just a nice rod to buy. The, the tips of them are sanded down, so they're really loose. But there's a lot of backbone. If you try and bend it, if you try and bend it down, you're going to you're going to see just how much you, you can haul up a really good sized fish, even you know, on a 24 inch um, model like I've got, just because they're all medium. They're all medium powers, except for that tip. The tip doesn't show you all the little bites, even from the predator bluegills up to your walleye size. Um, but for custom made rods, should you decide you, you want to go that route. Um, I would highly recommend going for Glacial Lakes Outdoors out of uh, the eastern side of the state out of Sioux Falls, I believe. Um, but with all these other rods out, you know, custom rod makers out there, why Glacial Lakes? Well, I used, I bought my first one last year from them. It's called the W3. Just a and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of in between an ultralight and a light action rod. So it's got a lot, it's made out of carbon fiber, so it's really sensitive, but it's got a lot of play. Great for panfish and trout. And I caught a, I caught a lot of a lot of fish on this one on this rod last year. But my favorite catch of uh, was was that guy. That rod should not have been able to handle that fish. 
Um, it was a, tw it was a uh, twenty. It was a twenty-six inch Laker, uh, just over eight pounds. Um, you, that, the way the rod was bending, I was trying to control that fish. Was uh, I was afraid on a couple of occasions, but it, it held up strong, and I did manage to get the fish up through a two feet of ice in a six-inch hole. Uh, so I get this. I used this a lot last year, uh, especially, if, especially when I was fishing for Lakers. I used the bigger one usually, but I was fishing on the west side of the lake on that one. And I wasn't expecting to catch a laker because they would only been caught on the, uh, on the east side of the lake. So I, I, mean, I was learning about five feet of water uh, when I caught him. So that made me a, a believer in their in their rods for sure. It was a great, and I got another one on order right now. It's a heavier action for going after lakers. Um, but it'll be a, I, I played with that at Sioux Falls Ice Institute um, last month and was very impressed by it. So that's what I've got on order myself. But. If you're looking at getting into the world of customs, be sure to give these guys a holler on their website if you, uh, or give them a call if you want to, a really good quality uh, rod. Reels, inline versus spinning. Uh, inline reels have kind of gained a lot of popularity over the last few years because of the lack of uh, line twist. Um, I think they're, they work great, for the most part, in shallow water, like 20 foot or less, um, just because You've got, you sometimes you have to pull the line out, it's kind of old after water if you're in 35 feet of water. And they work very really well for lighter presentations like 16 pounds for lighter jigs, uh, for the most part. And like I said, no line twist. Um, this particular model here is an eagle claw um, that I've got on one of my other one of my custom rods over there in the tank. Uh, that one has a special nice feature you push the button in and the line spray spools out. You don't have to yank it out so much like after some other models. Um, so I really prefer that one. And spinning reels are the most common, which pretty much most of, most of them have, most of us use. Easiest ones to use. But what it comes down to is more personal preference. Um, if you prefer Sega spinning, go with spinning. If you want to try an inline reel out, you know, you can buy a, buy a model for $20, $25 and just give it a shot. Um, you know, they're, they're just great in shallow, in shallow water applications or for panfish. I use uh, the inlines I have work really well in stockade when I'm going for crappies and bluegill. Or when I went like the Underwood um, out in that area. I do use them occasionally for tri or for perch at like Sheridan Lake when they're in the shallows. This is like some, some fish I caught uh, last year using a combination of inlines, which of course the inlines would be here and here on the trout, through the spinning reels, the lake trout, and the walleye. Augers, you got your the debate now of gas versus electric. Um, the one nice thing. I mean, gas, gas has its place. I mean, like I use this mostly for bigger fish now. Uh, Lakers, a bit deer field, walleyes, if I go up if I fish in an ornament, and can store it for freezes over hard enough, or shade hill with my dad. Um, but when you've got 36 pounds there versus 12 pounds on an electric, it's uh, quite the difference in the width and carrying capacity of each of the weight you're going to haul um, this is the this is the kind of conversion kit that I bought last year. I used this uh, just about 90% of the time last year. Um, you can worry about the batteries. I drilled, I think the best day I had was 60 holes through about four, uh, four and a half hours before the battery was even kind of one bar. So they're very efficient, especially if you have the 18 volt lithium battery or higher. So it's a 20, so it's a little better. But, um, you know, they did just, it, this, was, this was a, one of the best things I've bought for the last two years now is this, is this thing, just because of how light it is. I can go everywhere. I don't scare fish as much if I'm in shallow waters with it. Um, if you haven't tried one of these out, I highly recommend trying one of these out. Some people even use, uh, there's, there's the cage drill out now. That's even lighter than this plate here. I mean, this one here is, you know, this, this is most of the weight aside from this here. That uh, cage drill is uh, even lighter. It's made of synthetic plastic. And it's got a metal bit on top, but that's uh, one thing I'm going to need next year as long as cage drill fits, because it'll, it'll make this even probably two or three pounds lighter than what it already is. Do you use an 8-inch auger on the um, Actually, this year, the, this year Clem came out with a, a gear ratio box that the rooster has right now. You can it go attach this to the bottom here, and it gives you it gives more torque um, to, the, to, to a bigger blade. You can use up to a 9-inch if you have that box now. If you just go with the standard conversion kit, don't, uh, don't use bigger than a six. You won't get near the performance out of a drill if you go any higher than a six inch. But with that convert with that gearbox that they've got, you can, you can put an eight inch or even a nine inch on it. They're probably working on a tension in the future. 
2008. I used it that exact thing. We didn't play eight inch last year <clears throat> for two months. I could do, get about 30 holes out of that. Yeah, you're going to get about half. That's half with the holes. 36 hole yeah. Bosch. Oh, with the 36 even now. Yeah, you get, I mean, the higher you get, the less you know, less holes you get. Just you're drilling through more ice to try and try and put more stress on the battery. And lose it. So I wouldn't go any higher than the six. Now, how many holes do you get out with the gas? Well, if I if I fill a, if I fill a tank half full, I mean, I drill 100 holes in a day, and I still have enough gas left over. I'm probably another 40 or 50 more. Through about six inches, through about 16 inches of ice. Up at up at the shared room turn. How do you feel about the bird? The propanes? Um, well, the I mean, I just I just helped my dad get hold of a Jiffy uh, 44 Pro this year. It's his first propane, so I uh, they work. I mean, I've, I've seen them in action, so they work just as well as the gas. They, I mean, they start heck of a lot easier. The only issue you have is when it gets below zero, uh, it takes a few extra pulls. But I've, I haven't seen one not turn on even when it's been that cold. But they do recommend if you get one of those uh, tank sleeves. Um, some of the guys who, the Jiffy guys I met uh, this year at Down Sioux Falls, if you stick one of those little hand warmers inside there, that'll keep the tank warm enough and the gas warm enough for it to start one or two poles every time. So that was a really good uh, little, little trick. Yeah. I have one of the Jiffy Pro 4s I bought last year. Mm -hmm. It's got a half a season on it. I won't go back to gas. Oh, really? It's cleaner. You don't have the gas on mm -hmm. your hands. It's quieter. More convenient. <clears throat> you know, you don't have gas sauce around the bottom yep. of your tub. It's uh, a heck of an investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when they when they work really well, they work. I mean, it's you know, I mean, they're, they're a little heavier than some of the gases, because you, but you can get them in the light version now, I think, too. Some of them, so you get you save a few pounds there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's what I, I didn't have propane. This, I mean, that Jiffy is uh, about eight years old now. They didn't have any propanes uh, when I got it, but you know, between that and using electric now, it works pretty well. Um, I'm gonna go propane one of these years, but. Uh, yeah, it's a, the new the new ones are really nice right now. They're very efficient, very quiet, and like you said, a good a good investment. Looking for something a little easier than gas. Now the tackle. Now these days, jigs mostly what we use for perch and panfish and trout. Around here is what I mostly use. Um, tungsten is what majority of what I've got, just because I like I like the faster fall rate. I like it that I've got better cadence control. If I'm really, if I'm really pounding, the, pounding the jig hard, it's a lot easier to control and get, especially with plastics, to get the to get the control you want with with the tungsten. Plus, it goes through the slush and the, without having to clean out your hole and um, through the weeds a lot faster. And it gets down to the fish a lot faster as well. Uh, I recommend checking out the Clams Drop series. I've got pretty much all those ones in the front there. These ones here are all are all, are all but different clam models of the Drop series. On the back, I've got some of the Northland variety as well as some of the Eat My Bait uh, jigs. And those are just a few that I caught uh, last year on, on just different jigs, some of the different jigs. And so this is these are this is some of the drop series here. This was the first uh, of Clams drop series lineup: the drop, the dingle drop, the duck bill drop, the and drop, and the mega drop. Um, so. Those all work pretty well. This is kind of the standard that they went by was with the with with this one. Uh, probably one of the best trout lures if you can ever find if you if you find them here in town is this epoxy drop in orange. Uh, that works extremely well for trout um, up at Deerfield as well as on Sheridan. Um, so if you can, if you can find one of those, if you see one of those at any of the places here in town, I recommend them trying to find the orange or this red one here. They work extremely well. I think the, uh, the way the light reflects off this little crystal on the front is one of the things that really brings them in is because trout are such a visual fish. Um, last, new last year was the drop kick and the caviar drop here. Uh, this was my favorite, it's probably my favorite one of the entire lineup now. Um, this, is, this one was des is designed to really, when you jig it, the back end kicks up. So if you have a plastic on or anything with a little bit of a tail, it really just makes the tail quiver and dance. And, and it's really, really funny what you, you there's one attached from there on it. On plastic, you get a chance to go over and just kind of pound it and see what it see what it does. Just watch that jig way moves. It kicks that tail really nice. Um, and the new this year from Plan is the is the, uh, the snow drop. Um, this one I've been told from a couple of guys who demoed this out last. Well, the other pro guys who did this one last year it is really killer on trout as well. They said.
the um, I've got a few a few up here, so you can come and take a look at them afterwards. Um, but the way it's got this, it's almost like this uh, powdery, like a sugary powdery substance on that they infused onto the jig, so it's got kind of a rough feel, like sandpaper almost. But it doesn't come off when you rub it. But it'll it'll shine and reflect and reflect reflect light, kind of like those crystals do. So I'm really looking forward to getting on some trout uh, some trout with those this year. And you got the two new the two new ones from Northland. You've got the uh, this is the Bro Bling Bug. Um, I haven't got any of these ones yet, but uh, I know I know that I've seen I've seen my Cabela's in an eighth ounce. But I think with this one here, if you stick a plastic or even a uh, you know on this one, if you want to go live bait for walleyes in the eighth ounce with this with that with that uh, attraction the flasher there, that could be a really good uh, really good a really good jig for for wallet for trout and walleyes. And then they got then they got the new. Um, Oh, the new minnow dart here, I believe this one's called. This was made out of tungsten. Uh, that one's on one of the rods over there in the tank right now. It hangs at a, at a uh, slightly let more on a 45 degree angle, but if you go in there and jig, jig it with the uh, plastics on there, it gets, you get a lot of good action out of that one. And then some of the, some of the ones from Eat My Bait. Um, he's, uh, he's a guy, he's a guy named Travis out of Iowa. He does everything out of his basement. He hand paints all these jigs. Uh, he does a, a great job with the patterns. Um, these are just a few. He's got the, uh, the Ice Reaper series, he calls it here. They're flat in the bottom, and they have a rounded top. I've got one on one of my reels here, but they've got this sickle hook, which is a really good, uh, really good for good hookups, if you haven't tried one before. But yeah, it pays website a visit if you get a chance to see what he's got. He's got a lot of really cool <coughs> um, you know, patterns, uh, patterns on it you can't find anywhere else. Screens. Uh, they're flashier loud, they're just designed to calm the fish from a, from a distance, and they often get the most aggressive fish to bite first. Uh, you got your rattling baits like Clams Rattling Blade Spoon, Northland's Buckshot Flyer Spoon, or their new Ribbon Shad, <coughs> which, I have, which I have one of in there. And they've just got the BBs that make the clacking noise. Uh, the flashy spoons, uh, they seem to curve, and, and that's, what, that's what I guess what I called it a whole lot of lake trout with last year, was the more the flashy style. Couldn't get them on, couldn't get them on the noisy baits. Here's some of the new clam models. You've got the uh, the brand new one this year is the Flutter Spoon. Um, that's when a lot of the guys have been talking about. Um, all like all the, a lot of the clam guys we got to try this out last year when they were demoing it. We're just loving it, especially for lake trout, regular trout. Um, a couple of guys here they used it last year, so it was a, it was a trout killer for a, <coughs> for the first spoon. And I've got a whole bunch of those here too. Uh, the guppy spoon is uh, extremely light. If I've got a couple as well of those, it's definitely not going to be used in more than 10 feet of water because it is so light. But the uh, the wobbling action of this thing, I think, will be really good on uh, for, for bluegills and crappie, just from how just from how it's designed. But yeah, I'm not I'm not using any deeper than 10 foot just because it is extremely light. It'll take forever to get down below that. And then the new Jason Mitchell rattling blade spoon. Uh, the rattling blade spoons acclaimed last year. They were the same, the same colors they had the year before, but they added that rattle chamber. Uh, the Mitchell spoons have all got a, a nice bright coating on them now, a really shiny coating of either silver or gold. <coughs> and um, they work uh, really well. And then they have, that, they, have the, they have the flash combined with the rattle in the back. Got some red on the back and on this model, and you've got and you've got the uh, the rattle chamber on it with two BBs in it. So that combined with this nice little feather here will be a will be a good attractor. Some people or a couple guys even said they don't even need bait on this because the feather and the action of the noise do all the work for them. And those are all available on either a 16th, an eighth, or a quarter, or a quarter of an ounce if you're really looking for kind of an all a bait that has noise and flash as well. You the rattle. Um, I used the 16 ounce ones uh, last year. The, they're just the regular, regular rat, the rattling blade spoons last year. We're pretty well in purse out of Sheridan. Um, or if nothing else, we're bringing them in. If they didn't bite, then I just throw it on the jig after that. So it makes a good, a good way to, the rattle's a good way to call them in, if nothing else. <clears throat> and you'll get the, usually get the bigger, more aggressive fish too right away with the spoons. Um, then you have the Northland variety. The two new loud ones last year were that rattling, um, it was the, the rattling blade spoon here. 
Um, a lot of the Walla guys really fell in love with this one last year. Uh, the flyer spoon that Northland came up with last year also rattles as well. Uh, as well. And this is the brand new ones this year, the Minnow Dart and the Rip and Shad. Um, the Rip and Shad has got a lot of rattle in it. Um, let me see if I can get the one here I got. This is the, this is one of the rat one of the rat ones in gold because I always like gold for these things. But there's a lot there's a lot of rattle in these, so, so it'll be a, it should be a really good attractor. I mean, it's basically like the uh, like the you know, like the Rapala version. Here's a Rapala one right here next to it. And the rattle action is about the same. These ones, so I think these would both be good good this year for just for calling and fish something else. And these work really well on a walleye. Um, up at Ormond last year. This one here worked pretty, you know, gold color and the Rapala worked uh, really well on the walleyes up there. <coughs> usually on these ones, I'm usually coming up anywhere from six inches to a foot and just quick jerky motion and I just let the, let the bait go down by itself. But it's just quick jerks just to get, just to get the, the bait rattling good on the way up and then it does its own thing on the way down. Um, usually you know, I let it sit there for a, for a second or two because sometimes that pause is when they, is when they grab it. If, not, if you don't see them on your screen, a lot of times they'll just shoot in on that pause. <clears throat> so give it some voice, give that a shot if you get a chance. Do you tip those with anything? Um, no, normally I just use just the bait itself. Um, if nothing else, it acts, it acts as a tractor. And I can bring in, I've called them a lot of times, I call them fish with it, it doesn't work. I'll switch to a different, uh, different, different it's like a smaller spoon or a jig even if I'm going for walleyes. But uh, some guys do put on like a minnow head on these ones, and you can do that too if you want. It doesn't affect the action really too much. It gives you that scent as well as the sound and the, and the visual appeal of the, of the lure. And then uh, last year, that or Travis from Make My Bait, he came out with these demon tongue spoons, which are really kind of a neat uh, spoon. They don't come very big because he's, he mostly makes things for panfish. Um, it's, got, it's got a blade inside of the blade, so you get double, so you get all the action of the blade as it's going down. But then you also got that little that little blade inside there, which gives a lot of action as well. I and mean, they're always usually colored red. That's why it calls it the demon tongue. Um, but these ones, he sold out of these last year uh, pretty quick when he came out with them. And uh, I didn't have a chance to use them last year because I didn't get any until the end of the season. So I'm really looking forward to trying these out on bluegills and crappie and maybe even perch in the shallows because this is, this is the base they come in. So they're really light and not very big. <coughs> but those getting around his website, he doesn't have a, a store. On some of these, what's your preference between tying them and using swivels on them? Um, I use swivels with pretty much all the with all the spoons, especially the bigger one. Anything eighth ounce or bigger, I'll I'll use a swivel. Um, the sixteenth ounce ones, I'll usually just tie them on. <clears throat> um, it doesn't mean it, I don't think it affects the action one way or another. I haven't seen any real difference um, in how in how the action is affected by how you tie it on. I know the. Um, the different swivels seem to work a little better. Like a dual lock swivel, like what I've got most of mine, seem to free up the action a little bit more on those bigger spoons, on those eighth ounce and or bigger spoons, <coughs> rather than just the barrel snaps. So that's why I probably could use those dual locks instead of a barrel snap. And plastics. Uh, best advice if you haven't tried them is try them when the bite is really hot. Try them when you get on a school of perch or when the wind is your bite. Or when there's a lot of fish around, if you if you see like your if you're if you're, if you're next to shot like a Christmas tree, um, try them out then just to build some confidence in them. Because that's what I did two years ago, because I had a lot of bunch of plastics, but I didn't really have a confidence. I used a lot of maggots and whatnot and minnows. And then last year I switched. Uh, pretty much, I pretty much used them. Oh, about 95% of the time last year, plastics, just because I developed enough confidence in them. I knew how to use them, and I didn't need bait anymore. I only used uh, maggots maybe four or five times all year long. Because I had, I knew how to, because I knew how to work, the, work, the, work them. And if the if the fish weren't biting on one color, I just switch out to another color. And sometimes that worked, and sometimes the fish just didn't, didn't want to bite. Um, many use scents and various colors. Uh, red, pink, and purple are my two, are my three favorite colors um, that I used a lot last year. Mostly red, but I switch off once in a while just to get the fish something else to look at and smell. Uh, white works too if you got if you got some white lines. Uh, look at Clams Mackey lineup as well as JNS Custom Jigs, who Travis, he, he owns them as well on mybait.com. Um, North Attack also has their Impulse Plastics. 
And this is just a couple of fish I caught last year on various plastics. So we've got, um, these are some of the Mackie lineup from Clam. You've got the Genie, which is the one I used about nine times out of ten last year. On that drop kick jig, uh, the way that the way that jig made these made these tails go up and down and quiver it was awesome. Uh, the minnow, the minnow excel. I think this one is, is a little bit longer bait. It's about an inch and a half, two inch long bait. But the tail is so much longer that just jigging it a little bit, you get a lot of action in the tail. Um, a lot of guys use for crappie, and I did catch a few walleyes on the white on the white one last year. And new this year from the Clam series, from the Mackie series, is the Maddie, which is the one on one of those two. It's uh, just a little bit longer. It's got large, larger, larger fins in the sides with a flutter a lot and a long tail. So you, you really do get a lot of action on this. <coughs> and then um, well, I think it's going to work. It's going to be really, really well on perch here in the hills. This is this new bloody. Um, it looks exactly like a blood worm. It's available in like, like, eight, like six or seven different colors. Uh, red and pink are the two ones that I put the most in, I think, just because those are, this because it'll, it'll match the color, I think, a lot with the uh, the different uh, blood ones. But I'm, I'm looking forward to using this one on Sheridan Lake this year. I think it'll really be a good, good one to use. And I do have one of them put down to the, uh, the drop kick over there if you want to see how, how it works in the water. And these are some of the JNS custom jigs ones. If you, you won't find a more um, lifelike maggot imitation than this larva mag. Uh, there were a free there were a few of them that were free over there um, but I've, ne I've never seen one that looked so much like a maggot or was about the same size and they are scented so they so you know, try, try them on a small jig or on a small spoon and see what happens uh, this is the gojo which has a lot of action thanks to those two thanks to those two long legs it's on one of the uh, one of the one of the rods over there in the pool and the versamite which you, you got which you, they call a versamite because it's a it's a very versatile plastic Cut it off here, and you just got this here with a couple of little feelers. Or you can use the back end here if you have those nice, little, nice three tails there. Uh, this is this works for these ones. Uh, did catch a lot of trout the last three years. Um, off of the and then you got the impulse knife. The mayfly came out last year. A lot of, a lot of panfish guys really like it. There were a lot of those in the uh, in the free pile. And new this year is the uh, the water flea and the skeleton minnow, which I've got some here. Take a look at the water fin. I really, I really want to use just because that long tail with a fork. It's going to get a lot of action. It's on one of the rods in the floor, and you can kind of see how it works. And the, uh, the skeleton minnows are on the bottom here, and those could be a good one for for crappie, even some walleyes. I think so. We'll be trying those out definitely warm this year. And don't forget about those accessories because those are those have to be more fish on the ice just as much as the tackle. But Cold Snap Outdoors carries a variety of different accessories just to make the time a little more a little more efficient out in the ice. Um, we've got the cover. Both of both of my uh, augers here have got the cover on it because you know those covers that come with the come with the blade. These usually are just those. You got that you got that snap thing. You know that's kind of a pain in the butt. Whereas this, when you get it off, you just have to clip it off like that and put it back on. Just drop it in. It's ready to go. Real handy. Quicker, easier. You don't have to get down on your knees and strap on the, one, you know, the cover that comes with it. Um, so you definitely have to check those out to get a chance. We got the rod clamp. We just want to get them, in, get them in two packs here. They just flip inside of the shelters. Just gives you a place to stick your rod on, um, just so you, get, you can use a dead stick when you're in there. Or a place to keep your rod if you want to get it out of the way. Um, they, fit, they fit all sizes of shacks, except for otter. They don't fit those the square bars. Uh, the reel wraps, which you know, most of your custom rods and some of your store-bought ones don't have reel seats on, so you got to attach the reel somehow. Uh, just use these uh, these reel wraps come in really handy because they keep the, they keep it secure and tight against the reel, and I think they, they also kind of transmit a little bit of the vibration from any bite uh, through them into you know, through them while you're while you're your hands on. And the toothpick, which uh, everybody should have. If you don't already have one, they're only two and a half dollars. Five if you want the land, if you want one with the land with the lantern already attached. Um, works really. It uh, saves your jigs and it saves the fish. If fish sucks these things down, you can get these things get in there. Pop that hook out, bring it out. Your jig is one piece, and the fish is usually will usually survive. Um, I've 
caught a lot of deep dupe. You cooked a lot of fish for the summer. I use this a lot this summer. And uh, every fish that I use it against, pretty much they all they all swim away. Even when I caught, there was a trout that I caught recently in open water with Pactola that uh, right, it caught it pretty deep, but I got it out. I didn't think it was going to swim a bit, but it didn't swim away. So it's a great little, little accessory to have. I would highly recommend looking at, or trying to get a hold of one if you can. Um, Kids here. Who's the youngest? <laughs> oh, those ones back there. I'll give you guys one here. There you go. Who <laughs> asked questions? You get the, the three. The rooster. The rooster sells them. Good. Uh, yeah, the rooster is a place down that sells them. Otherwise, you can go to their website, Cold Snap Outdoors, and they have all this, they have all their, all their accessories are there. Yes, Bob. Did you ever be into debarbing your hooks, or would you, are you very firm on your? I like. I guess I've never tried, you know, push, shoving in the barb to make it like that. I know some guys choose to do that because you can increase the fish mortality that way too. Um, <coughs> I guess it comes down to like, it's a personal preference if you want to try it. Um, I guess I like I like I like I feel a little more secure. I guess having the barb there and having this on me at least I'm pretty. I know I can pretty much get the hook out and fish deep, even deep, deep throat in the fish and get it out without the uh, kill, kill the fish. How about you? Typically, lake trout, artificial or live? Even alive or not? Um. Well, the. I, the only time I used it last year on lake trout um, was, uh, was when it got a little, little deeper and a little deeper in the throat and it survived, uh, it survived just fine. They do make a new one this year, which I haven't gotten yet. It's called a Toothpick XL. <coughs> it's about two or three inches longer, and it's got a deeper V here for those bigger hooks, for, 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 for more toothy creatures like your, your, your pike and your walleyes and your, um, your, your, your lake trout. So those ones all come with a lanyard. I think they're six or seven dollars on the website. I don't know if the rooster has them yet. I know they have just the regular toothpicks themselves. I don't know about them with the lanyard. But you can get the ones with the lanyard on the website if you want to. If you want to it's just, and you can attach these to a lanyard if you want. Um, but, uh, yeah, I recommend, yeah, if you haven't got one yet, go to the rooster for two and a half bucks. It's a great little accessory to have. Okay, yeah, question, right up here, these gentlemen. Yeah, all their accessories, their you know, all the, the the real wraps, the cover, the tooth the toothpicks. <coughs> you know, they're all they're all on their website. Yeah. Um, the guys do they, they do come to town once in a while um, during shows and whatnot. They're always in Super they're, they're based out of Sioux Falls in Minneapolis. So that's where I usually usually see them a lot is that is over at Sioux Falls at the SEC too. In every November. If you haven't been to that show, I have been getting over sometime. It's a great ice fishing show we were there with all kinds of all kinds of seminars and uh, Bo came out there. Came here this year, last year. It was a great, great experience. I'm just uh, how much you're going to learn out there. You know, the, the different, just talking to people, or just listening to the seminars, the pro, the pro. Uh, Online resources: you know, HSM Outdoors and Ice the Ice Team Forum. You know, HSM Outdoors is a social media platform that does a lot of. Uh, well, what we do is we, we send in we send in weekly uh, fishing reports, and then they post them on Facebook and on their website as well. If any of you follow them, I mean, there's me, me and uh, Craig Boyle, the two guys from Rapid who are on their, who are on their pro staff, and I pretty much every week I'm always submitting a different report. It's either a fishing report or a tip or a safety or safety advice or, you know, um, or you, if there's anything to do with fishing or hunting for the most part. So I'm all pretty much all sending in. It's a good, good resource to use if, you have, if you're on Facebook or we're checking on their website every once in a while. What's that? Uh, yes, I'm on, on my on my Facebook page. Well, I'm on my website. There is on my website. Here a little bit. I do have links to all to a lot of sites. Um, new this year from Clan, they've got a new a new forum for the for the ice team there. And once you register, uh, you have access to lots of information, lots of contests where you can win plastics, hundred dollar rods, um, uh, fishing line, and then they've got uh, tips tips and advice on rigging up your shack, ways to modify a, a guest box if you've got one. Um, 
fishery reports look different from, you know, from Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, what have you, much across the U.S. belt. Um, it's a really good resource uh, to use this year now. <coughs> it's just nicetheam.com to find the, the forum. Uh, hook set media. And then we've got resources for listening for actual human er interactions. Uh, the rooster, great resource to go to. What's go what's working? Carry probably a very large selection of ice cream and banana recently. Uh, the best variety of bait in the state. And the only place time to get red maggots, which they just got in today. It looks like because it was on our Facebook page. Uh, so be sure to give our to give our local our local support to our local store. Uh, conclusion. Uh, dress up the conditions and you'll be out in the ice longer. Choose from any assortment of you know the different tackles out here just to make yourself more successful. And uh, you'll be catching more fish in no time. And if you need any more information, uh, you can or any more advice, you can get a hold of me at my book at my email address, Dr. Auger Eddie Hotmail, on Facebook at Dr. Auger, Ice Fishing, or you can just look at my name, or on my website, which you which which has links to a lot of these different uh, pages. Uh, so I highly recommend visiting it. You can also get a hold of me on there. I've got a, a link to my email as well as my phone number. Um, and uh, that's the presentation, guys. So, are there any questions? Um, my wife and I just got the new lift suits, the new uh, clam suits for this year. Mm -hmm. um, when I got them, they didn't come with any uh, care instructions. Since you have one, is there any special with them? Being um, the care instructions are wash in cold water on a gentle cycle. And then um, dry, an air dry. Do not, or if you're going to dry it in a in a dryer, go really go low, um, or just air, air air drying is the safest bet. So that's what I do with my suit. I just I just wash it on a gentle cycle, and then I let it. Um, I, let, I just let the nice light air dry. It's probably the stupid question, but um, so when you're bringing your perch up, like say in Deerfield, and they're getting that air bubble, is there a safe method to pop that bubble to let it um, Some people go in, go in with a, like a little needle that helps pop, pop the air bladder a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, once that, once the, the bladder pops out, it's really tough to get them to survive. Mm -hmm. Usually those ones I'm just keeping, just because the chances of them actually making it back down if you do manage to get it, it's pretty, pretty it's small. Yeah, it's for speed. I mean, if, if you're fishing the deeper water up at, over at, the, over at Sheridan, um, yeah, it's, uh, you bring them up too fast, it's gonna, and it's really hard to keep that wire. You have to bring them up almost at a stable space. Um, deeper wire, yeah. If you're fishing under 30 foot, you're okay. Well, the 8 gives you real basic, um, first you on off and sit in the game. You don't get a zoom or or like a or a bottom or like a bottom lock. It's real just a real basic introductory type of, uh, of one. And then as you go up and as you go up higher, you go to the, you know, to the 18. If these like these two are, you get you get bottom lock, you get the zoom, um, you get deep you look at the water penetration because really the eights 20 foot or less. You're okay to get over 20 foot. You're in the 28, for instance. You know that's that's the, that's the top of the line. Um, it goes up to 300 feet. It's got uh, weed mode and some number of different features that I'm going to learn about here this weekend. What would be the best I like a uh, Minnow XL um, or the uh, the Jamie XL. A little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger mouth, so a little bigger plastic. Yeah. What's your favorite rod? My favorite rod? Well, it depends on the year and what I'm going for. Last year, that W the uh, W3 rod from Glacier Lakes was my favorite rod. Um, otherwise, when I was going for pretty much anything. Um, otherwise, when I was going for walleyes and lakers, I used uh, this, for the most part, this custom rod uh, from Rickers Custom Rods of Indiana, or the uh, head, or my or the heavy action here from Clan, the, the Split Grip series, heavy action. Yeah. What's the best spot around here for fishing trout? Well, it kind of depends on the lake um, where you go. Uh, for trout, deer, for deer field's kind of been the best one. Uh, that I've that I've found. <coughs> um, uh, Gold Run, uh, or on the rock, they're on the west side of the lake. Those seem to be the best places. Um, south, uh, there's a bay on the South Marina, uh, Sheridan, where I caught some really nice ones. Some nice uh, 17 meat teachers last year. Um, so those would be some different places uh, where you should take a look at. Yeah. 
yeah, you just you just take it and you just follow that line down to the hook and you just bring it to the hook and you just kind of you just pop it out. They really, really works really well. In the back, in the back. So, um, like, do you fish with those like jigging wraps at all, like for walleye or the deep tail? The jigging wraps, um, not really. I mean, I've got some in there. Most of them are, are north of the northern the northern variety, but uh, I just I don't have a lot of confidence in them. So I'm ho hoping to, to try maybe try them out this year a little bit more, um, just to get some confidence. What it is about most of these lures? You just gotta have confidence in them. I just don't have any. I've tried them before. I never caught any. In the wind back. What's the best puck for your best water, for your shallow water? Best puck? Well, you're going to be looking at a, at a smaller one. You're probably looking at you know, uh, so shallow water. You want a wider cone, so you're looking at at least oh, about 12 to 15 degrees uh, for shallower water. For deeper water, you can go, you can go to about 9 degrees because you're going to need the water. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's kind of the way you've got. Yeah. Say, does it, the lower you go, is it? When the water's coming in, is it colder or is it warmer on top and colder on the bottom? Or when the water comes in, I'm looking for a depth of trout, but mm -hmm. where the, the water comes in and it's flowing mm -hmm. into that pond or lake, whatever. Yeah. Well, normally around that room where the water's flowing in, it's going to be a little bit warmer because the water is still circulating. Is that higher or lower? It'll be higher. So it's going to be, so the fish, the trout are going to be higher up. Yeah. I mean, if in the shallower water, I'll catch I'll catch trout, you know, bring those in. I'll catch them right under the ice sometimes. Right, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Yes. You're right. Fish on Uh, nobody I know has gone to Deerfield yet to fish. Um, if it ain't freezing now, it will be. It should be in frozen for the next few days probably. Yeah. 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 So would you recommend Haley's and what size? What's that? Would you recommend Haley's and what size? Haley's lures? Yeah, those work really well um, for perch. A lot of guys, I mean, if you, if you look, at, look at the guys who are driving around on Sheridan, uh, pretty much everybody's rod has got a Haley's on it for the most part. Um, there's, and, you know, and I use, I've got some Haley's and some Pilkies, and I also use those speed spoons from Plan. They're basically a Haley with that same drop chain on. No, you would normally go from those spoons. Well, because I've never gone after them specifically, I'm going to go to Jenny Dolphs this year. Or I'm going to go to Stockade in a big inner part of the inside. Okay, we're going to run some of the door prizes here with quick guys. We're running out of time. Uh, this is, this is uh, for Jared Crandall. You get this nice assortment of, uh, of Northland deer here. Thank you. Put stuff in there for a count, a little bit of everything. All right, next thing we're going to next thing run for is we're going to say collection of plastics from JNS to milk. <laughs> and I have a uh, I have a, a lanyard of a, a toothpick here with a little bit of a lanyard on it. That's going to go to Elijah Gehagen. He's laying on here. Let's get a little more back to Lantern on it. I've got some, they got a plan of line nippers down there. Now, where are the gift cards here? $10 gift card to the rooster. Natalia Tanner. Go there, they got, you know, go there and make sure you use that up because they got, they got a lot of, a lot of good lures there. Good stuff. And the big one, the fifty dollar discard shields. Richard Track. <laughs>